please welcome Adam Nair, an advisor of manufacturing for Earthrise Envoy. Hi, how you doing? Uh, a little bit about my background, because some of you will probably recognize me because I used to work out here. Um, when I was really young, my father uh, wanted me to be an engineer, and I wanted to be a photographer. As a result, I became both. <laughs> so uh, basically, my uh, journey brought me through a lot of different uh, uh, things that I've done in both areas. And one of them, uh, let's see if we can get this, please. Ah, there we go. One of them was working for an aerospace company uh, here locally. And uh, we participated in the Indian River raft race. You probably are all familiar with this. Now, what does this have to do with innovation? Well, the first year it didn't go so well. Uh, I was the videographer, believe it or not, on this first project. It didn't have anything to do with the design of the boat. I thought it was kind of an interesting thing, what they were doing. and. So we wound up with a vessel that was kind of interesting. We, call it, we called it Bigfoot, by the way. And up the Yeti River without a paddle. This was the 1992 raft race. It was a mechanical entry. And the mechanical entry is a kind of an interesting uh, thing because it's really big budget stuff uh, for a raft. Uh, you know, some people just put a little boat together and away they go out in the river. Uh, but mechanical entry, engineers design it and build it. We had all the things you need, fit and able crew, ample budget, highly trained engineers. Enter Bigfoot. As you can see, it is not a sleek and nimble vessel. This was basically the bottom half of an M1 Abrams tank powered by 2.4 horsepower. That's what you get out of eight people. Uh, you can imagine an Emerald Abrams tank with 2.4 horsepower did not go very fast. And while it was a wonderful looking thing with a really slick paint job, it came in last. As you can see, we're being be beaten right here by a rowboat. <laughs> it was fun. It was meant to be fun, but we came in last. And that's the problem, because, of course, when we came in last, the executives of the company said, why did you come in last? And we had to explain why the design didn't win the race. Well, the first part of the problem was politics and group dynamics. This was a design by committee. And if you look at all of the points there, we wanted to stick to proven methods. Avoid looking foolish at all costs. Oh, we don't want to do that. Designed by a large committee. We got everybody in the engineering department together to put their two cents in. So as a result, we wound up with Bigfoot, this giant hairy yeti that lumbered around and didn't go very fast. Compromise. Everybody had their say. Nobody wanted to hurt anybody's feelings. So as a result, Bigfoot. And that results in design by dilution. This was the thing that was driving them against doing an innovative design. The fear of the blank page. Oh my gosh, we've got a blank piece of paper here. Let's go find out how other people did rafts and just kind of modify it a little and have some fun and you know maybe do a few other things. Well, as we can see, that didn't work. Eighth place out of eight entries. Really, unfortunately, angry executives saying, that embarrassed our engineering department. Frank and probing questions about why Bigfoot came in last. You can imagine the effect that had on volunteers the next year. Nobody wanted to touch it. Desperate times and nothing left to lose the next year. The executive castigation was so severe, nobody wanted to volunteer. There was a high visibility, potential for embarrassment. Everybody ran like heck. The only candidates that were willing to take the challenge were not design engineers in concurrent engineering. I was in photographic uh, high-speed motion analysis. Uh, the guy that was the other uh, engineer on this project, the, the lead engineer on it, was a guy by the name of Mike Brennan, and he was a range test engineer. So we weren't in the design group. So 
if we design something and it failed, well, they say, oh, well, those guys aren't designers, you know, we'll just the heck with it. So we were eager to prove that we could do it. This was the things we had to do. Make it fast, use all the horsepower, make it elegant, make it fun, and above all, win the race. This is how we did it. We used the correct materials. We did a lot of the math. We tested. We threw all the conventions out, and we just decided to take it from scratch, from that dreaded blank piece of paper. And this was the result. Now, I wish I could speed this up just a little bit to show you. This was the test trial, but in a second, you're going to see it in the actual race. And you can see that thing's ripping right along. The competitors that we had in this race were from the other engineering companies. This is us finishing, and you see one of our competitors very briefly there going the other way. We almost lapped them. Uh-oh. He didn't like that. OK. Large established groups develop conventions, stifle innovation. They make Bigfoot. Small, newly empowered groups of fairly effective people, they're a much better choice for innovation. The kind of people that innovate are not the kind of people that do concurrent engineering. The kind of people that most managers have a little bit of problem with every now and then those are the innovators in your group. And if you identify them and empower them, you will get innovation. They have different personalities. They don't think like concurrent engineers. They think like innovators. Micromanagement and instilling a fear of failure will kill innovation. If you make the consequences of innovating so terrifying that no one will do it, it will not happen. This is how you kill that innovation yeti right there. Choose people that speak up, propose bold ideas, don't pollute with inform conformists, and provide sufficient resources. And that will make you say goodbye to Bigfoot. So that's it. <laughs>